So, so here I want to propose you a theory. Okay. That's kind of captivated me, and it's partly woo and it's partly science, but it'll really. That's my favorite stuff. It's your favorite stuff. I like half a so, woo. So half a woo. So yeah, you got a T-shirt that has a woo on the front, woo on the back. So if you turn around, you're woo woo. But so the the Eleusinian mysteries. You know about the mm -hmm. Eleusinian mysteries. Yes. So they ran for 1,700, 1,800 years. They ran. They started out before Gre the Greek civilization. Well, explain people what it means. What it what it was, it was a kind of like a burning man, or more serious than a burning man. It was an initiation ceremony that happened at Eleusis in Greece. And it was run by women, sort of high-class women. They were kind of a monopoly. And when they finally got this thing cranked up, because we don't know much about the earlier history, but you can go to the Temple of Eleusis today. It was destroyed in the 4th century by characters that I want to bring up later. This is why we might be still in the culture of the people who destroyed Eleusis. So they built this thing. So the, the fully powered up Eleusis theme park transformational experience was a thousand person buried temple. Could, could house a thousand initiates buried under the ground so that the people couldn't see out. So they were totally in an internal process. The initiates came from all over the Mediterranean. They included Roman emperors, philosophers, etc. And you had to go to Eleusis once in your life because the thought was you then became a human being. So they came off their boats, they landed, they, they wore the same garb, they had a fasting diet. Sound familiar? They had a fasting Sounds diet. Sounds like Ramadan. It sounds like uh, what, what I would say today. It sounds like people who are doing initiatory practice, ayahuasca, for example. People are going to Mecca, too. People same thing, going, wearing the same clothes. Exactly. Bring them down. And so the initiates would walk through villages, and the villagers would come out, and their job was to catcall, to, to swear and, and bring the people down, say, oh, you've got a big nose. So, so if it's a noble person who's a lot of wealth, they're getting screamed at by villagers, and they get knocked back to lo knock them their their ego out, and and to dissolve them. Basically, a boundary dissolution exercise. They were walking next to fields which had wheat, which had tiny mushroom-like purple. It's a perpia. A, a brain is shot today, but it was a, a, a basically a, a rust that would grow on the wheat that was used to make the kaikion drink that would be given to the initiates after nine days or eight or eight or nine days. So this is like some ergot-based thing? Ergot-based is an ergotamine, sort of an ergot-based. How do we know this? Because I thought that was like a giant mystery as to what they were taking. Like some folks thought that it was psilocybin. Mm -hmm. Some people felt mm -hmm. it was an ergot beer. Mm -hmm. It was some sort of an ergot beer. I mean, Hoffman's book, he talks about it probably being an ergot beer of some sort. Right. But it, there was definitely an initiant potion. That was extremely powerful. But what makes you think that it was what you're saying? Uh, because you can find this, you know, in the area of Eleusis today, you can find, and I'm no expert. I mean, you should have an expert on this on the show. Right. I've, I've read a number of books about this. But but when I piece this together, so there's a fantastic book called Psychedelia by Patrick Lundborg that came out last year. He passed away, unfortunately, the author. is quite a young man. But in the first chapter, he details this. And what he says is the initiates would come in, they would go into the temple, they were on this fasting diet, the temple, uh, the people who were running the temple, it was sound and music, it was olfactory, smoke, color, uh, and they were driven to this intense state, and then they were given the kaikion. And I think they, you know, uh, philosoph Greek philosophers and others have written about their experience at, at Eleusis. And they would emerge um, really in, in, a, in incredible, maybe they got incredibly high, maybe their boundaries would dissolve, but they emerged with visionary, uh, coming back with vision of what to do, what to do in their world. And when they, when they went home, they boarded their ships and whatnot, and they went home. And what did we see happening in that period? Greek theater, mathematics, the academy, road construction, hyd you know, hydraulics. Uh, the idea of a city, organizational structure, uh, the republic, the idea of polity, the idea of representation. And the Eleusinian Mystery School was just one of many that were going on, but Eleusis was a big deal, right? Eleusis was, was destroyed partly in some periods, and then a Roman emperor would, would reboot it. 
And, and finally, and I think it was the end of the fourth century, coming in from the north were sort of the savage Germanic tribes that were basically taking out the whole Western Roman Empire. And guess who was coming in from the east? Black-robed Christians were described as, you know, cranky fellows with a real um, sort of obsessive, perfectionist, reductionist kind of negative. They were described as really nasty characters. They formed this compact, and together they destroyed the temple at Eleusis. So my woo-woo theory is, are we living in an inferior culture that has no initiation? Replacing initiation, powerful initiation with what? You know, all these other structures of, of abuse and usury, you know, church structures, corporate structures, commercial structures. Are we juvenile? You know, are we, were we made juvenile by the fact that we didn't have a powerful initiatory experience that dissolved our boundaries, that, that opened us to vision, that, that, that made us human beings? I, th I certainly think that's <clears throat> very arguable. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you if you compare our resources to their resources, what we've accomplished and what we've managed to fuck up in comparison to what they managed to create yeah. with, with no combustion engine, with no hydraulics, of course, with no... Of course, they had slave cultures and there were a lot of... You know, but here's here's the other thing, and you, you should ask Graham when he's next on that. I'd love to, to hear his response to this. What did you have before the rise of civilization, especially in the Mediterranean? You had the Upper Paleolithic, you had village cultures, tribal cultures, you had quite a bit of conflict, but quite a bit of advancement, but that was, you know, thousands and thousands of years. And then suddenly, and, and for sure, they had some kind of initiatory experience for their youth, especially for young men, because as we know, you know, in, in, Excuse me. in cultures of... Uh, indigenous cultures that still have an initiatory practice. I think that's a very important part of like life having some very clear like graduation process. Exactly. And we have it throughout schools, we have it in grade school, we have it in martial arts. Martial I mean, arts very is important. one. Yeah, jiu-jitsu and martial arts is where we're bringing it back, right? Mm -hmm. Strong initiation. Yes. Because you know, you probably see this because the people that haven't had that they they cruise lost. oh they're yeah. lost and they you know the ones that have been very pam you know pampered and helicopter parenting we all talk about this and they're now talking about the hoop jumping uh, circus trained circus pig kids that upper middle class parents say jump through this hoop jump through this hoop you know they're three or four years old and they're jumping through these hoops because why because they're being prepped to get into top level universities right and so they they jump through all these hoops and there's a a professor at Harvard written a book about all this, and he said he's watched in his incoming classes of these kids that are really good at achieving the goals, but they can't deal with ambiguity, they can't deal mm. with irony, they can't deal with creativity. Creativity. They just living go, outside the box. Right. So they're going to jump to you know the investment bank, or but they're not very functional. So because they've not had a you know a, a practice of initiation they've not have a leveling practice a boundary dissolving practice they've been in this programmatic evolution and it's dangerous yeah i, I think that there should be some sort of graduation process for v various stages in your life that sort of establish the fact that you've learned from your mistakes you've grown you've achieved and you've gotten through some you've overcome some adversity and you're here I